In this video, I'll show you how you can create a curriculum map in Notion that's not only visual, but gives you that crucial bird's eye view of your entire lesson year. There are many approaches to lesson planning out there, but I find a lot of them are too focused on day-to-day -day lessons, missing how topics connect, and they're often created one at a time without seeing the full picture. So if you want to see your whole curriculum at once and make sure topics flow in a simple and easy way, then this tutorial's for you. Okay, to get started, we're going to begin with a new page, and we can call this Curriculum Map. Now, for this template, we're going to need two databases. So we'll type in slash data, and we'll call our first database uh, subjects. We'll create a second database down here, and we will call this Topics. Now, we're going to hide these titles here, and we're going to add in our own titles just to make it a little prettier. We're going to do this, type in topics, add a little divider, and we can do that again with subjects. We can move that up here, add a little divider, and there we go. Now, before we get started creating all of these new uh, properties in our table database, we're going to link the two databases together and so they can kind of communicate with each other. To do this, we're going to click on this plus arrow and we'll come down to relation. We're going to select on subject because we want topics to communicate with subjects and we'll click on two way relation. Topic is fine and we'll change this to subject here. Okay, let's just quickly change these icons here. We'll change this to a shape and over at topic here, We'll change this to right. Good. And so now the two are linked together using a relation property. Now, to get a better view of these databases, let's change this page to full width here, and we're going to start adding properties to our topics database. For now, we're going to actually hide the subject relation property because we don't need to use it quite yet. So we'll click hide in view. And the first property we're going to add is a status property. So we'll come over here and click on plus. We'll go to status. We're going to change a few of these here. I'm going to remove the in progress one. And for complete, I'm going to title this planned for to do i'm going to say not planned just change the color here and so this status property here is to help indicate whether a topic or a lesson has been planned or not planned we're going to slide it to the left here and maybe just change the size here the next property we're going to add is to help us organize these topics by week and to do this we're going to use a select property at first we're going to click on select and we can title this week maybe give it a different icon for week here and then if we add in an option we can begin by typing in well week one week two week three now i would like to do this for the entire year but manually typing in 52 weeks is going to take uh, a little bit long so we're going to use ai to help us do this so to add in select properties like this really quickly i'm going to show you a little trick now i'm just going to delete this select property we just created and i'm going to create it again but this time i'm going to select a text property we're going to call this week and give it the same icon again there we go but now i'm going to use the power of ai to uh, help me autofill all of these weeks really quickly and we're going to use notion ai to help us do this now if you don't currently pay for notion ai you could easily use the free version of chat gpt or claude or any of those as well so i'm going to type in give me all of the weeks of the year separated by a comma like so week one week two week three etc Okay, there we go. I'm going to copy these here and I'm going to go to our week property and copy and paste all of these into here. I'm then going to then change the text property back to a select property. If I click on select here, you'll now see all of these weeks have been manually entered, which is great. Now to help sort these even better, I'm just going to click on alphabetical. Now we could just leave it like this, but I'm a little bit OCD with colors. And so I'm going to just manually change these all to gray. Okay, and there we go. Now, you, you don't have to do that. You could just leave the colors as they are. I'm just really particular with colors and Notion, and so I'll just spend the extra time uh, doing that. All right, let's close that out. Let's delete this because we don't need this here. And we can see now that we have all of our weeks uh, kind of nicely organized uh, like so. 
Okay, the next three properties we're going to add are going to help us with our lesson planning, and that's going to be a property for our standards, assessment, and activities. I'm going to create a, uh, a text property here, and I'm going to duplicate this three times. Duplicate this, duplicate this. I'm going to rename them. Rename the first one uh, standards. I'm going to rename the second one. We're going to call this assessment activities. I'm going to resize them here, maybe change some of the icons to be a little bit nicer. Okay, and then we'll resize some of these a little bit. So these three text properties for standards assessment and activities are just there to help us plan our lessons a little more effectively. As for our topics database, those are the only properties that we need to add. The last thing we need to do for our topics database is to add a topics template. So we'll come over to our blue arrow here and we'll click on new template and this will bring up a new page. Let's full screen this here so we can get a better view. We can type in, give it a name, write topic here. We'll give it an icon. Let's select a, a good icon for this, maybe here. Okay. And now we're going to customize the layout of this page template. So let's click on customize layout. I'm going to turn off page discussion. Uh, you don't need to do this. I just find it reduces unnecessary noise on the page. I'm the only one who's using this Notion page to do planning, so I don't really need to make comments or communicate with anyone on my workspace. So we'll come over to the property group here and we'll click this and we're going to add in two sections. I'm going to click on add section and type in information. I'm then going to add one last section and I'm going to title this lesson details. Let's move information up here. Then I'll have status subject week here and then we will put lesson details down over here. Great, and that should be it for our customized layout. We'll click uh, we'll click on apply to all pages here. Great, and we're still editing the template. So for lesson details, standard assessment and activities, I'm just going to leave some question prompts here. So whenever I do create a topic, it is there to remind me what kind of information I should be adding in these text fields. And what skills do you want your students, students to learn? Maybe under assessment. How well students show they know the skill. Then lastly, under activities, what activities should the should these students do? Okay, great. And that is it for our topic template. We'll come back to the main page here and we'll go back to our new template and we're just going to click on the three dots and click on save as default. We'll click on all views and topics there. Okay. And now whenever we create a new topic, it'll create this page template with the name, all of our question prompts, and it's just nice, clean and organized. Okay, let's clean this up a bit. We'll delete these two topics here and let's just fix up our subjects database. And we don't actually need to add any more properties here. Just the topics relation is fine. But to make it a little more visually appealing, we can change up the type of view for the subjects database. So as an example, let's just add in a subject. Maybe we'll just say English. We're going to come over to the three dots and change it from a table to a gallery view. Page content, we're going to select on page cover. Medium, maybe we'll just select small for, for this. This looks fine. Okay, now let's add in a template for our subjects page. Okay, we'll open up the new template here and we'll full screen this here. Let's type in new subject. We'll give this an icon, maybe a book. Okay, and just like the topics template, we're going to click on customize layout. Let's first click on the property group here and we have topics. Now, once you start planning and you're planning out many topics for maybe one subject, you're going to have many, many different topics, 10, 20, 50, whatever. And so we're going to actually hide this and click on always hide. Now we actually have a better way that we can view these topics inside the subjects page. And so here you can see in page settings, we have structure, simple, and then tabbed. We're going to click on tabbed here. And then we have a first tab, which is content. We're going to click on the second tab and click on topics. And so now we will be able to see all of our topics for this subject. Let's kind of arrange these here, make it a little nicer. So we're going to put status onto the left. We're going to remove subject. We're 
we're going to click on hide. We're also going to hide these activities, assessment and standards so we can just see the status, the name and the week. Let's also click on sort and we're going to sort by week as well. OK, I believe that's all we need to do for subject and we'll click on apply to all pages. Great. And so now we have two tabs. We have a, a tab for uh, subject content and then all of our topics will show up here. Let's come back to the main page and see what we have here. OK. OK, and that's it for our topics database and our subjects database. So now let's start working on the actual map part of this curriculum map. OK, to start creating this actual a map for our curriculum map. We're going to come over to topics here and we're going to duplicate this table. We're going to click on duplicate and we're going to call this. Well, we're going to call this map. Let's maybe change the icon to a map. We're going to change the layout to a board view. Let's change some of these properties here. So group by we're not going to group by status. We're going to group by subject sort by alphabetical. Doesn't really matter. Hide empty groups. We're going to turn this off. And we will also hide the no subject. Now we're going to go to subgroup and we're going to click on week. Hide empty groups. We're also going to remove that off. And then we're going to change the sort to alphabetical. No week at the top. Week one, week two, week three. OK, this looks good. Let's move the map to the left here. OK, so now you might be thinking, oh, well, where is this map? Well, we got to do a few things first. If we click on plus here, we might be able to see English. OK, and so we can have English pop up here. Then we can start adding in our topics. We could click on new page and then we have a new topic. Just having it like this isn't so helpful. So let's add in some properties that we can see. We'll click on properties and we will show standards, assessment, activities, status, and subject. Let's move the status to the top here and we will also move subject here. There we go. And now we're able to see if a topic is planned or not planned. We can also see our question prompts here for adding in assessment standards and activities. And then we have our subject as well. Having it appear here can be helpful if, say, we have 52 weeks of lessons and you forget which column your topic is in. OK, let's now demonstrate this map even further by creating a new subject. So if I click on new subject here, maybe let's call this mathematics. Close this out. Now, you notice that a column has not been created for this a new subject that we added. We could just come over here and click on the plus sign, and then we are able to see mathematics here. But I'm going to give you a little trick to have these columns show up automatically. So to do this, we're going to create an automation. We're going to come over to our subjects database here. We're going to click on automate. We're going to call this automation uh, create new topic. Now, this automation will fire every time a new entry in the subjects database uh, is created. So we'll click on new trigger and click on page added. And then whenever a subject is created, it will do an action. So we'll click on action and we're going to click on add page two. We're going to select our topics database. We're going to type in write topic here. OK, we will click on edit property and we'll click on subject and then we will select the trigger page. And so when a new subject is created, it'll create a new topic and tag that topic to the new subject. OK, great. OK, let's try this out. Let's click on new page here and we'll type in English. We'll close this and a new topic should be created below. There we go. We can do this again. Let's uh, create a new subject and we'll call this mathematics. There and a new topic has been created. We can then take this topic and drag it to different weeks. And this is where we can begin to plan our lessons. Now, if you don't have a paid Notion account, that's fine. You don't have to use the automation. You'll just have to manually click on the button here and then select the subject. But that's not too much of a hassle to save 10 bucks a month.
Okay, let's make one final change to our topics database. We're going to come over to topic and we're going to type in turn. We're going to turn this into a call out. Let's just change the color back to default and we'll remove this icon here. And then let's just move everything inside this call out box. Once you have multiple subjects uh, in a board view, I find keeping everything inside a call out box kind of keeps everything like nice and organized. OK, let's demonstrate how this curriculum map can actually be used now. So let's create a few more subjects for this demonstration. We'll type on type in science and then we'll create another one. Maybe we'll call this call this general. Let's give our subjects a different background, too, just to make everything look a little nicer. We can just change the size as well. OK, cool. That looks pretty nice. Let's go down to topics here and take a look at what we have. So here we have a board view of all of our subjects in columns. And then going down the columns, we have subgroups uh, broken into weeks. So these are weeks of the year, week one, week two, week three. Now, you don't have to plan uh, your lessons or have your curriculum map based around weeks. Uh, you could always change these to uh, individual days or even months. Or instead of having week one, week two, week three, you could have week one and then the date. It's completely up to you. So just in that previous step where we got Notion AI to write out all of those weeks for us, you could just do that the same way, uh, but for months or specific dates, uh, it's completely up to you. But having your map like this, uh, you're able to create uh, topics very easily. And also what's nice is you can drag them around. On top of that, we have a status for planned or not planned. And so this can help you stay really organized with uh, what topics you have prepared materials for. Over time, you can fill out all of your topics for each of your uh, subjects and hopefully create a really effective plan for all of your subjects. One final thing we can do is if we come to the table here, we can go over to the three dots. We're going to click on group and we're going to group by subject. We're then going to click on sort. We'll sort by week. OK, and now we can see our entire curriculum map in a table view. So instead of being organized by week in a board view, we can easily see uh, all of our topics like this. Now, if you're interested in downloading a more complete version of this template, you can go and click on the link in the description down below.